Coastline defense, best and worst defenders coastline today. Now, let's do this. Alibi is coming out off the rip. Alibi is a very, very strong operator on this map. Very frag heavy map. You want guns on this map because the attackers, they're gonna be coming at you with a lot of heat. You wanna play aggressive as a defender and Alibi is gonna be great for that. Alibi is probably S tier on this map. The only real downside is there might not be as many spots to put your Prismas as other maps might have. So um, she's probably going to be a lower S tier op for this, but amazing gun. The clones are still going to be useful and the shield is going to be great on every site. So I'll buy S tier for show. Aruni is actually going to be pretty good on this map. I'd probably recommend the DMR just because there are some longer angles, but you can pull off a lot of plays with uh, punch holes in the floor, opening hatches and flanking. Uh, the Aruni gates are going to be very good as well. I would say Aruni like A tier on this map. Hookah site, putting them on like the hookah door and the other hookah door to double defend like that shield there or one on the billiards double is going to be good as well. Also really good on kitchen for service window. Lots of, lots of good spots for Rooney Gates on this map. I would say she's A tier, maybe even S tier. You Let me know what you think in the comments and, and then maybe I'll agree with you. Azami is a beast of an operator. Ever since she came out, she has been just fucking stellar. I think Azami is an easy S tier on this map. I think Azami has been S tier on every map so far. Coastline, no different. No recoil weapon. Impacts or, or barbed wire is going to be very good for playmaking or just having info and then the Azami barricades You're gonna you're gonna have lots of spots to put them and they're always gonna be strong good for rotating out of uncomfortable positions Or if you're getting pinched, they can be very good just when you're in a pinch So S tier easy S tier Azami's fucking ridiculous right now Start playing Azami if you don't if you need a new operator Azami's your girl. She's fucking beast now, Bandit's been F or D tier in most of these lists, but I actually think today he might make it out. Who knows? Let's think about this. The Bandit batteries themselves can be okay. If they're playing Ace especially, you can do them on the Billiards wall or that Hookah wall. Uh, gonna be really good on the Blue Bar site and Kitchen, probably not so much, but if you wanna go upstairs and hold VIP, you could Bandit off the walls as well. They're probably not bringing Maverick. They're probably not bringing Thatcher. So I would say Bandit's like C tier. C tier, he's made it out of the dumps. He has the MP7 and a Nitro Cell, and he's fast. So aggressive plays with Bandit can be very good on this map. But again, Bandit batteries not gonna be doing a whole lot. So there are still gonna be better options to pick in order to set your up, yourself up for success a little better instead of relying on getting those gunfight kills. But Bandit, you've made it out of the D tier, buddy. Congrats on the C tier upgrade. Castle on Coastline, I don't recommend too much unless you're playing the penthouse site. He has the ump, so a lot of those gunfights are going to be not in your favor, which is not good. Now, you can set them up on like these crazy castle realms if you really wanted, but the attackers are already going to have an excessive amount of utility, so opening up those castles is going to not hinder them whatsoever, really. I really just think castle's a, a, a poor pick on this map in general. Low C tier for sure. It's pretty bad when he's below Bandit. Cav on Coast is pretty ridiculous. Not only is her weapon set pretty weak, but there's not a lot of hiding spots. You're gonna get droned out pretty highly likely and your utility is going into the fucking garbage bin. It is gonna be useless. She's gonna be horrible. Easy F tier. This might be the worst map to pick Cav on and she's already a bad pick on most maps. So that says a lot. Don't pick Cav on Coastline like probably ever. A big issue with Coastline is there is a lot of crossfires and a lot of pinches and a lot of different angles you can get as an attacker and as a defender, which is why Clash is going to be pretty low on this list. It's going to be tough to move around to Clash and actually plan out an escape route that you can use effectively without getting shot in the back, naded through a drone hole, shot in the back through a window, shot in the back once again. You're going to get shot in the back if you didn't understand that. So there's not a lot of movement you can actually use to your advantage to get around safely with Clash. For those reasons, she is also going to be F tier. Really just, in my opinion, a bad pick. But you could, if you are a good Clash player and you understand her very, very well, you could get away with picking her uh, in some situations. Dock on Coastline is actually going to be D tier. Typically, Doc is F tier because Thunderbird is just such a much better option, but this is actually an upgrade for, for Doc if you watch my other videos. Now, I still think Doc is not a great pick. That being said, he has the MP5 with the 1.5 sight, which is more than Cav and Clash are bringing, so I can't really put him on the same level as Cav and Clash. Plus, if you're taking some of those engagements and getting away, you can heal up 
You know what? You know what? Dock over, dock over castle on coast. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Today's our day, chat. Dock has made the C tier. Uh, having the MP5 over the ump is probably big, good enough to put him over castle, and those castle barricades really are not going to do much at all. Dock C tier. We've done it, boys. Echo is not a fantastic pick on coastline, but he's not horrible. The Echo cams can be okay, but there's a lot of spots where you just can't sit on cameras. There's there's not a lot of safe spots to play. Similar to Coastline where there's not a lot of safe spots to play, except the Echo Cams are gonna be much worse than they are on Chalet. I meant Chalet, not Coast. So he's gonna be pretty bad actually. Uh, you could, if you are playing Echo, I would recommend just setting your cameras up somewhere for info and trying to stay off of them. Let your dead teammates play them or just use them for callouts because if you're actively playing them, you might just get killed while you're on the cameras because you get shot through a floor or shot through a window or they walk in on you because you're the only person on site and you don't know they droned you because you've been on your cameras or whatever it may be i think echo is still a still a good pick just because you know the echo cam it's echo he's better than doc you know you know what i'm saying so set up the shield set up the cameras use the 1.5 mp5 suppressed amazing weapon and go go nuts ella on coast not not terrible i would say b tier Scorpion's a pretty decent weapon, plus the Elamines are really, really good info because there's a lot of entrances in different ways the attackers can come from. So, B tier, uh, not much to say about Ella. Also has a shield, so the shields are gonna be good on this map too. Just give you that extra cover that you might need. I actually think Frost is a pretty good op as well. I think Frost is probably B tier too. There's not a ton of amazing spots for the Frost mat, but you can use the shotgun to set up site, which there is a lot of setup on some of the sites, so that's gonna help out your team a lot. The frost match, you can put them on windows. Even if you're playing hookah, you can put them in the basement, on, on the kitchen window, on the sunrise window, on the blue bar window, anywhere they might want to hop in. You can put them there. And then you have a shield and a very, very strong weapon to uh, run around on the defense with. And that's that's pretty much what it comes down to. So I'm going to put frost in the B tier. I am really not a huge fan of Goyo on coastline. There's a lot of angles the attackers can get to just shoot them on their own. Like if they get up on the hookah repel, they can shoot them on the could doorway if they get up on the big window repel they can shoot the ones aqua side really goyo is probably only gonna be super good on the blue bar and the kitchen site maybe the penthouse site but overall i feel like goyo is just a weaker pick on this map i still think better than the bandit utility and the echo utility i'll put him like low b tier because the vector and the nitro are still gonna go hard and i believe he's a three speed so He's gonna he's gonna be running around clapping cheeks. So you can't you can't really go wrong with his loan out. I just think the utility is a little weaker on this map specifically. Jaeger, however, is gonna be S tier. Probably a bit better than Alibi. ADSs, you literally cannot go wrong with ADSs, the barbed wire, and a fantastic weapon. Jaeger's Jaeger has been S tier on every map so far, and I don't think that will change. Pretty simple, well rounded, and very useful in every situation. Unless your team is like all playing hyper aggressive and spreading out and just running out doorways and going crazy, that'd be the one situation where you probably don't need Jaeger. Other than that though, very good. Kate on this map or Kaid is 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 not not great. He's good-ish if you're holding like the upstairs on the kitchen site, you could you could cade the outer wall. If you're playing the penthouse site, you can cade the outer wall. The quad wall, yes sure you could cade, but it's very easy just nade that off or open it from underneath because the attackers are probably taken under there anyway. He has a very good gun and a, a nitro cell. So I think he's like lower A tier, maybe maybe top of B. I'm gonna say top of B. I don't think he's like solid enough or impactful enough to actually be A tier, but you can kind of do some like tricky plays with him, I guess, that, that kind of make up for it. Good loadout, utility is just lacking a bit, lacking a bit. Capcan on coastline is gonna be like A tier, if they're playing hyper, hyper aggressive on the attacks and not droning well enough, you could definitely catch some people off with the cap can traps. Amazing gun, 1.5 scope, nitro cell. Really just very good counter to the play style that Coastline typically has to it, which is that hyper aggression and just aggressive takes, pinches. It makes the attackers have to think a bit before they actually do what they are trying to do. So I think Capcan is probably just above a Rooney here in the A tier, but very, very good pick for Coast. Legions, I think an S tier pick on Coastline. Because there is a lot of pinching going on from the attackers, a lot of people coming in from different areas, and you probably can't hold all those areas super effectively. So it's just the extra info that you probably need on this map that is going to get you by and be very, very helpful. 
Legion, typically not an S tier pick, but this map is not like super utility heavy. It is very info heavy and Legion's gun is also gonna blast people apart. Um, very, very good pick on this map. I think maybe even above. No, lower than Alibi because Alibi has the Bailiff shotgun, which is gonna be very, very helpful. Maestro has an LMG. The BP cameras are pretty strong, the bubbles as I like to call them. But kind of in the same boat as Echo here where you're not gonna be able to use them too much. I think in rank specifically, Doc or Maestro, sorry, is not gonna be not gonna be super good. I think Bandit might even be a better pick than him on this map. No, I can't do him that dirty. I can't do him that dirty. No, I can. Can I do it? He's gonna be, he's gonna, he, he has to be above Bandit. The LMG is a beast. The LMG is a beast, and those cameras are very useful. Like I was saying with Legion, you don't have all the info you need, so bringing that extra info is gonna be good, especially when your teammates die. And that way at least the attackers have to clear something before they go for a plant or they go for a big flood or you're gonna have the info on them. So a little, pretty good, pretty good on this map, uh, especially for kitchen. So if you do wanna just pull them out once in a while, I'd recommend bring them on the kitchen site, set up a, a cam facing sunrise, set up a cam facing service, and then you have info for if they're just trying to flood into the site on you. So he can be a good good pick for that and still gonna be better than Bandit. Malusi, amazing pick on this map, exact same reasons as Legion extra info slowing down those attackers makes it very easy to kill them by swinging off those malusis and there's a lot of late round rotates that go on so it's very nice to have those malusis at your back to cover you or if they're just trying to rush super super solid operator and very good on coastline right there that's where she goes mira on coast is weaker than most maps i would say you could do um like a kegs mirror facing lobby you could do uh, a Mira facing Hookah Door, a Mira facing Billiards and Aqua from Hookah. But the a lot of them are very easy to open by just opening above or opening below. So there's a lot of spots that they aren't like super bunker heavy and super well protected. For those reasons, I think Mira is like a B tier pick. Better than Cade, top of B tier. Maybe you could argue for A tier, but... Let's argue for A tier because of the Nitro and the Vector and the secondary shotgun. So not only can you set up site, have a great loadout and get some use out of those mirror windows, but you can also walk around like a fat ass and beam kids, I guess. <laughs> no, no, stop it, stop. She's top of B. I'm moving her to top of B because she's slow and it's hard to like move around quickly. It's very easy to get like just fucked up and the mirror windows typically aren't the best. Now, Mozzie is a beast on coastline. Getting rid of the info while also being a solid two speed, because I said he was a three speed. I still think he's a three speed, even though I know he's not. Being a solid two speed, having the nitro, having the Roni with the 1.5 is so lethal on this map. Mozzie is so lethal on this map. Even if you're running the commando, still so lethal. I think Mozzie is A tier for sure. Top of A tier, maybe S tier, maybe like back end S tier. It's hard to say. He's either here or back end S tier. Very, very good pick. You really can't go wrong with picking Mozzie, and he can be very useful on pretty much every site. If you're just an aimer, if you're a shooter, and you want to be a beast, just run the Roni. Mute is definitely an S tier operator on Coastline. Drones, drones, drones. Mute, already you should be playing him for drones. Mute, in my opinion, just isn't a wall denial operator, unless it's an interior wall that people tend to ace or Habana very frequently. In that case, you can use them for wall now. Just throw one mute down, use the other three for drones. Getting rid of info is so, so strong on coastline. And there's so many good spots for mute jammers here that he's always gonna be, he's always gonna be a good pick. You can even run the MP5. If you have someone with that secondary shotgun that's willing to set up the site or you have impacts to make the rotates and you just want a basic site setup, bring the MP5, get aggressive, use a nitro and get rid of the alder info at the same time. You can be super, super lethal. Not quite as good as a zombie, I don't think, but definite S tier from Mew. Oryx on Coast is very good, very aggressive. 1.5 T5 is a fucking beast. Plus you can open up all the hatches. There's a lot of hatches. You can vault up for flanks. You can drop them for flanks. You can help with the site setup. And then you can go kill a bunch of people. I think Oryx is middle S tier, super strong, and he's a lot of fun. So if you want to have some fun, play some Oryx, smash through walls, beam people with the T5. <laughs> Live your dream, man. Live your life, dude. Guys. It's time. I have to move Doc and Castle down to D tier. I'm sorry, Doc. I thought we had you going so strong, but we need to make some space in the C tier because that is where Pulse is going to land. Pulse is going to be right here above Echo, above Maestro. Actually, let's put him right between the two. 
the pulse scanner can be good, especially if um, they're not clearing underneath. If you know they're not clearing underneath, you can gather tons of info for your team and also maybe even get a nitro kill on like Aqua or Theater or Penthouse or whatever. So if they're not clearing underneath, you can play them underneath, whether it's the kitchen site, hookah site, whatever site it really is, you can play them underneath and go for the nitro kill or just gather info. So if they're not clearing underneath, pick Pulse, go crazy. The downside is he has the ump, which isn't the best weapon in the game. And it's a little risky playing Pulse here um, just because your weapon is so weak. But if you, if you find a good opportunity to use it, he can be pretty solid. This is the one map Rook might be okay on just because of the fact he has a two time scope and nobody else has it. If you want a spawn kill, you can do it with Rook. You get the extra health for your team, and because it is a scrappier map, the extra health might actually pay off more often than it would on other maps. Because you don't necessarily need super heavy utility on this map, and you want to play for gunfights and stuff, Rook can be an okay pick. I would say bottom of C. Still going to be better than Doc, um, because he has the two times sight, and the impacts allow for a little more playmaking than Doc would be able to do. Uh, and if you combo him up with like a Thunderbird, then you can go full health mode and just really hope you don't get shot in the head, I guess. Um, not the worst pick. Bandit's definitely going to be better than Rook here, but we'll put him we'll put him low C because Rook, you know, he deserves a little bit of love, I think. Smoke. <sighs> Smoke's a unit, dude. Smoke's a freaking unit. Smoke's going to be great on every single site here. I would say top of S tier. Not only do you have the shotgun to set up the site, but you have the smokes to stall time, which is the biggest thing. If they're playing aggressive and they're going for those rushes or they're just pressuring on site, use the smokes to allow your teammates a little bit of extra time to either get a pick or get back to site to help you. And that's gonna be very strong. Not only that, absolute clutch machine, cut off one angle, swing another, take those fights. Smokes, smokes just one of the best operators in the game right now, always has been, and he's gonna stay top of the S, baby. Tachanka's tier though is not the S tier. It's D tier for Dejanka. Dejanka. No, he's not that bad. He's really not that bad. I still think Tachanka is a less than ideal pick on this map. I would say below Bandit. Your fire is just not going to be super useful unless it's really on like the kitchen door or the kitchen window on the kitchen site. But on Hookah, not going to find a lot of uses. You're going to probably get killed with your Tachanka launcher out if you're trying to use it to like stall a push in. They'll probably just run through and shoot you in the face while you have it out. It's just a very risky way to play on this map because it is so gunfight heavy. On top of that, if you're bringing the LMG, it's not a great weapon compared to others. It's hard to hit headshots with. It only has a one-time sight and there's just much better options than Chachanka, in my opinion. Thorn's gonna be a beast on this map. I think Thorn's like A tier, bottom A tier. Thorn traps are gonna be super good. Similar to Ella, how they're gonna give you a lot of information, except her gun is a fucking beast. So you're just gonna shred people with her gun, use the Thorn traps to swing on people or get aggressive. The shield, throw it down on site, let your teammates use that, or bring it on the realm with you if you want. Using her gun and Thorn traps, you can probably make, you can make a lot of plays. now. I think Mira is actually a better pick than her, so I'm going to put her behind Mira here. Almost made the A tier Thorn, but very good pick. If you want to play Thorn, this is probably the best map to play her on. Thunderbird's going to be A tier. A lot of gunfights, a lot of damage is going to be taken on this map, and not necessarily always going to be headshots because sometimes, or a lot of the time at least, it is some longer range fights, so it's a little more difficult to hit the head. So you're probably getting away with your life a little more often than you would be on other maps. And then on top of that, you don't need all that utility that you need on other maps. So Thunderbird's gonna be a very, very good pick. I, I might even put her in S tier. I think she, I think she's a, an S tier, I, I'm gonna put her in S tier. Yeah, she's gonna be an S tier pick on this map, above Malusi even, um, because I find those Kona stations are gonna be very, very helpful for you on this map. And there's a pretty much, pretty much every round, I think you're probably gonna get some use out of them. The spear is gonna be a beast. The nitro is gonna be great or impacts if you want. And yeah, Thunderbird, Thunderbird, pick her. Pick her on coast. Valkyrie on coast is is very strong. There is a lack of info on this map, so having the info is, is very good. MPX plus Nitro Cell, ultimate combo, beast of a gun, beast of a utility. Using those cams to get aggressive. So if you're if you're using those cameras and telling your teammates what to do with the cameras, where to get aggressive from, it is so so easy to pick people off and get get really impactful kills. I think Valk's got to be top of the S here on this one. Even better than Azami, I think. So much info and so so useful to know where to rotate, when to rotate, and how to play and how to be aggressive and when to be aggressive. 
top of the S tier for, for Valk, right behind Smoke. Vigil's another A tier op on this map. I think even above Mozzie here, getting away on the roam is gonna be super useful. And his gun is a freaking machine. So running around with Vigil, impacting your way out of sticky situations, dodging drones, hiding in spots, and wasting time on a map that's so small is gonna be very, very helpful. This is a big reason why Jackal is so good on this map is because it can be really hard to hunt down a Vigil here. It's hard to get the pinch on someone where you don't know exactly where they're at. And a lot of times you can get away with, with picking people off on the backside and escaping with your life. So very good playmaker on this map, top of the A. I think this is one situation where Wamai is not quite as good as Jaeger on this map. Typically, with the ADSs, you're just planting them right on utility on this map. You're planting them right on the anchor spots. And with Wamai, if you're bringing both, you have to you have to stay around the site so you can actually use those discs. Now, we can be good on a roam, but the rounds end so quickly because the map is happening so fast, the map is played so fast, that you might not even get your discs down most of the time. And most of the time, if you are, they might not be super useful. I think he's still a really good operator on this map. I think he's just quite not quite the S tier that we would like to see. Probably right here between Vigil and Mozzie. You might disagree with me on this one. If you do, let me know in the comments. But I think well, is just a bit weaker on Coast than he is on other maps. Warden's gonna be a great pick for this map. Not only does he have a shield or a nitro cell, which are both gonna be very key, but he has a fantastic loadout for killing. MP5 with a 1.5 so is nasty. SMG12 is nasty. On top of that, there's a lot of smoke play. There's a lot of ying play. There's a lot of flashbangs, I guess. So you're shutting down the option for the attackers to use that to absolutely mess you up on site. So Warden's actually going to be pretty highly rated compared to most of his places. I think honestly Warden is like a top of B right above Mira. Not quite A tier, but very, very strong pick. And even if they're not using smokes or ying or flashes or whatever, he can still be very strong and you can be aggressive with him. You can make plays with him. And he's just, he's just got a good loadout, dude. He's just got a good loadout and coastline is a map for good loadouts. So that's it guys. We have a very top heavy list here. Take this with a grain of salt if you must, but ideally you're running ops who can kill people. Hope you enjoy guys. Let me know what you think. We'll see you on the next one.